Hello to everyone who is watching another episode from my Gaming Fathers video games review series. This time we will focus on puzzle platformer called Muni. Do not let your brain cells fall asleep, prepare your intellect and let's get started! In this game you need to help Bionin, once the raven, now the little girl, to go through the world of Yggdrasil to reclaim the lost feathers and return to Asgard. Even though Bionin has been transformed by vicious Loki to mortal girl, she still preserves a godlike power to rotate environments, to surpass obstacles and solve the puzzles. The story here is just the background to explain where you have found yourself and why you have this magical ability to change the environment by rotating its parts. Unfortunately, it is not interesting, and if it were not specified that you play for a character from Nordic mythology, you would not be able to find it out by the environment or some other indices. It's a shame that the authors were not able to use this rich mythology better, but story is not the most important part of puzzle games, so let's move further to see how the game is played. At the start of each level you stand at the bottom of the screen and your goal is very simple. To collect all feathers that are placed on various spots that you would not be able to reach without using your magical skills. The screen is divided into several square shaped parts that you can rotate by simply moving the cursor into them and using the appropriate action button. In the first levels you are rotating just one part, while in later levels some parts are interconnected, so you will rotate the bottom left part you are also rotating top right part of the screen, for example, which makes you plan your steps in advance. You can rotate any part of the environment, any time, except the one where your character is currently standing. What are you actually changing by your action? You are moving shards or fireplaces out of your way, moving ladders from horizontal to vertical position to be able to climb them, or moving the water flow from one direction to another, to be able to reach the high spot by swimming up in currently flooded chamber. The concept itself is indeed interesting, but in each level you are basically doing the same thing only in different environment. Channeling the water flow is a good idea, but again, when you are doing it in the fourth or fifth level in a row, it becomes tiresome. There is no life in this world, so you will not meet any NPC, your character is not developing in any way, and there are not even any interactive objects if we do not count the environmental parts themselves. This turns original and refreshing idea into stereotype quite soon, and even though I was not playing so long, I found myself just rotating and trying in late levels instead of thinking and planning, which is not a good sign for a puzzle game. Is there something else that can save the game from oblivion? Here you can see what I was talking about. Two pieces of environment are interconnected. So you are always rotating two of them and you need to plan your steps wisely. Let's have a closer look at the game graphics. Imagine beautiful nature, full of trees and mountains, with sunrise reflection shining in the water flow. Or a small landscape with dark sky glowing by stars and crescent. And imagine it in nice hand-drawn graphics with sharp colors on the foreground and slightly blurred colors on the background. This is something that you would expect from the game inspired by Nordic mythology, right? Yeah, unfortunately this is also something that you cannot expect from Munich. 
We will get generic environments with low quality colors and hand drawn graphics looking like drawing of 8 years old channel. I'm usually not judging games by its graphics, but if the basic game mechanics fails, there needs to be some additional value that might keep your attention. Okay, the instrumental music is quite good, but again, its quality varies from level to level. How about controls and the game difficulty? Here you can see the word level where I need to channel the water flows to get out of these chambers by flooding them. That's it. I made it even though the jumping from water to the bank is quite frustrating. The controls is very simple. You just need to use directional keys to move, key for jump and mouse cursor to rotate the environment. Despite the simplicity of control, it feels a little bit clunky sometimes. For example, when you are swimming in the water and want to jump it from it to the bank. The difficulty level is said okay, to let you using your brain cells enough, but not to make the game frustrating. Each level can be resolved within a couple of minutes, but sometimes you will spend a longer time before you find the solution, especially in the water levels where you need to react quickly sometimes, not to let the water drain away. So, what would be my final decision? As you could see, my review has been far from being celebrated. Rotating parts of the environment was fun in the beginning. However, the original excitement was soon replaced by the feelings of stereotype. There is no character development, no life, no interactive objects, graphics is rather ugly, controls is unprecise, and the potential of Nordic mythology is shamefully unused. On the plus side, our only original game concept and atmospheric music which is not enough to keep your attention for a longer time. The game is suitable for children and might develop their logical thinking, but the question is how long it can keep them interested. Million cost 5 euros on Steam, and if you really want to try it, I would recommend you to wait for a 50% discount at least. I was rather disappointed, as I was expecting more from the game published by Diadelic Entertainment. Hence I'm giving this game thumbs down and Gaming Father's Index 5 minus out of 10. Thank you for watching my Munin video review and hopefully see you again when reviewing a better game than this.